Welcome friends. If you're here because you crave conflict or you relish it vitriolic verbal violence, then you're probably going to be disappointed. However, if you want to listen to two fountain pen nerds argue about fountain pens, then stick around because today I am going to be showing Brian here why the Lamy Safari is far superior to whatever he's got. Well, I'm gonna be shattering Drew's flimsy reasoning to pieces myself and illustrate why the Twisby Eco is the superior writing instrument. So let's see how this goes. All right, our presentation today is going to consist of three rounds and a bonus, each covering different aspects of fountain pen desirability. Uh, Brian and I will take turns advocating for our respective pens, give each other some uh, constructive feedback, and then at the end, uh, no doubt, we will uh, have agreed um, that I'm right. <laughs> Yeah, we'll see about that, Drew. Let's kick it off, shall we? Shall we, Round yes. Round one, notable features. This includes aesthetics, you know, variety, overall appeal, these kind of things. And uh, I'll start it off, so it's Wisby Eco. Um, you know, it's got great presentation and great packaging. You know, it's, if it's got that nice clear case, it's got little tools in there. It's got Frosted case. Nice, it's not nice instructions. I mean, it's clear enough for me. Um, it's got everything you need, especially if you're somebody new starting out to it. If you're gifting a pen, it's got all the instructions right there. You're not left wondering what the heck you're supposed to do with this fountain pen. It's got everything you need right in one place. Um, it also comes with all the tools for disassembly and maintenance. That is definitely not something you get with most fountain pens and uh, Twisby provides that for you. Uh, and then you got lots of color variations, right? Currently available color variations, might I add. And uh, there's special editions, including not only the Eco, but the Eco T and other variants too. So really, whatever kind of color, whatever kind of look that you're going for, you can probably find something in the Eco that's gonna match your style. And uh, the nibs, the nibs are really good. Great, reliable stainless steel nibs. You get an extra fine, fine, medium, broad, and a 1.1 millimeter stub. You get that whole variety. Nibs are removable. You can pull them out clean the pen, remove the feed easily. Don't get it messed up when you try and put the feed back in the pen. You know, you got all kinds of options. So uh, there's just a lot, of, a lot of really good things going on with the pen. It's very attractive. And uh, the clip doesn't at all look like a potato peeler. I think that it's uh, beautiful and fantastic. So what do you say, Drew? Uh, first of all, Brian, easily remove the nib and feed yeah. without yeah. worrying about anything. That's right. I have seen you completely collapse a set of Twisby fins on a feed before, sir. I mean, that was when I didn't know what I was doing. Oh, okay. Well, the Lamy feed, as far as, you know, we'll, we'll cover serviceability later in, mm. in round two, but okay. I'm just- True, I did waver a I'm, bit from the aesthetics. I'm gonna, I'm gonna just put a, we'll put a pin in that, Brian. Um, as far as giftability goes, the Lamy Safari might be the most gifted pen in Found pen history, we don't know, it's unconfirmed, but maybe. It's super popular. Where are you, where are you pulling that data from, Drew? <laughs> uh, my brain. Um, this pen is the entry point and has been the entry point for decades, Brian. This is the go-to for people across the world starting in their fountain pen journey, and for good reason. It is approachable, it is kind, it is friendly. You've got a very, very strong clip that despite whatever its aesthetics may or may not look in regards to kitchen appliances, it works. You can put this thing on jeans, burlap, canvas, whatever. It's going to stay on. It's never going to let you down. It's a sturdy plastic construction. You do have only the option for a cartridge and converter. Yes, that's true. But if you're mm -hmm. gifting a pen to a beginner, Brian, you don't want to scare them off with a bunch of tools, a bunch of a thing of silicone grease that they don't know what to do with, a bunch of weird instructions. This doesn't need instructions. It's just, you just know what to do. It's simple, mm. it's accessible, it's not intimidating at all. And you do have a bunch of nib options, like the Eco, yes, but with this one, you have more, Brian. You have the extra fine, the fine, the medium, the broad, the A, the left-handed nib. They have oblique options as well that we don't have. But anyway, you've got 1.1, 1.5, 1.9 mm. stubs, and you can get the fun 
super unique Lamy cursive nib as well. Mm. As you know, that's a newer offering. Yeah. Twisby doesn't have anything. And it requires like that. no explanation, right? Just uh, we're easy not gonna, for the beginner we're to not understand gonna get into what that. all these acronyms mean. Yeah. This, as you can see, is the shiny black Safari Brian. These also come in matte colors, not only matte colors, mm. matte textures. So you get a whole different tactile experience which you know, is not something that the Eco is able to offer. Mm. Uh, currently available in 18 colors. And one thing that's great about the uh, build and just kind of overall look at this, they're great for um, re-gifting and uh, buying secondhand too, because mm. the converter is easily removable or replaceable mm. and no, not a lot of internal malarkey to have gunked up. Um, All it's that simple, malarkey, huh? it's approachable, it's friendly. And I dare say, Brian, mm. and I don't think you can argue with this, mm. this has the best, most transparent ink window in fountain pen history. Well, I can't argue with that. Yeah. Do you have anything else you'd like to cover? Or shall we move on to round two? Um, I think you pretty well said everything you needed to say about the aesthetics. Let's All move right. on to round two. Um, let's talk about its operation and use. Things like performance, build quality, serviceability. Um, starting out with the Eco, you know, it's got a really, really great cap insert. This pen will not dry out for a very extended period of time. Makes it really great for shimmering inks and high sheens, things like that that might be a little higher maintenance. The Eco is gonna take care of that, you know? It's gonna always be able to kind of start right up whenever you use it, even if you've been sitting around for a long time because you don't clean out your pens very often. And, uh, you know, you have a little bit of ink left and you're like, oh shoot, I need a pen for the video that we're about to shoot. Let me grab that Eco, cause it's gonna write right away, even though I've neglected it for several months. Just hypothetically speaking, of course. Um, let's see here, what else? Uh, the clear body shows the ink really well. Now that is partly aesthetic because it just looks dang cool. Cause after all, we're using fountain pens. You wanna see that ink sloshing around. That is like part of the experience and not just peeping through this teeny little window through this frosty converter where you can't really see what's going on. You wanna see the ink in its full glory sloshing back and forth, especially if you got some shimmer going on there. Mm, just can't beat that. And uh, yeah, it just looks really good there. It's also super practical because you can see what your ink level is. And uh, not that you really need to because it's got such a huge ink capacity you know, arguably three, four, five, 12 times bigger than the Safari. I don't even know, it's like the lost count because it's so much bigger. Um, really easy to disassemble and maintain the pen. Not that you really need to, but if you want to, maybe you're a tinkerer. Maybe you're one who, when you are given something that comes with tools, it does not scare you, but it in fact incites you because you just love tools and you think it's really awesome. Not only that, but you might also be able to use that tool on other pens, like perhaps maybe a, Pilot Custom 823 or a Pelican M800. Just hypothetically, I don't know. These are not anything confirmed, but let's just say you wanted to. Um, you could always try. Um, you can even flush this pen with a bulb syringe if you want to. I have done that many a time. Basically, if you take the piston mechanism out of here, it's just like a big, you know, grip section, just like you'd have on a cartridge converter. So you can still use your bulb syringe gloriousness when cleaning this thing out. And uh, you can also, if you want to clean it out, you can get a cotton swab in there. You can fit all kinds of stuff because it's nice, big. You got lots of opening and room to work with cleaning out your pen. Um, let's see here. The nib in the feed is totally removable, easier to remove. I'm not gonna say it's the easiest of all the pens in the world, but it's definitely easier than the Safari. Um, yeah, the nibs are swappable. Granted, they don't sell spare nibs, so you could, but you can swap it between other Ecos such an affordable pen, just buy multiples, and then you can swap any of those nibs anytime you want. Um, I will say the body is gonna be uh, slightly larger than the Safari. So for those like me, who have maybe larger hands, fits even more comfortably. And uh, you know, it's it feels stout. It's got a little more weight to it. I don't know, it just feels like it's a little more substantial. Uh, and it doesn't have this weird triangular grip. So if you maybe oh, yeah, you don't you... want to uh, be treated like a helpful. child, uh, well, you said helpful. you accidentally said weird. Helpful. Well, yeah, I, I yeah, I did because, mm. uh, yeah, some of us, uh, you know, Rachel included, she's got a four finger grip. She can't use that triangular thing. So uh, what's she gonna do? It sounds like user she's error. Gonna come on over to Eco is what she's gonna do because you can grab that pen any way you want to and just live <laughs> your live your best life. Um, and the clip is gonna be really strong. Um, maybe it's maybe you can't use it on your burlap pocket on your pants like Drew does, but. Um, still extremely practical, holds a pen very strongly. 
And uh, yeah, I think I've said all I need to say. All, all the right. usefulness of the Eco. This pen was made with nib swappability in mind. So the, we can just, we can stop talking about the mm. Eco's nib swappability. It's just yeah. not even in the same category as this. Mm. It's the got clear ease, instructions on how to do that too, right? The ease in which you don't need, look, boom, it's done. Mm. Like there's, you pull it. Yeah. You, you yank it, you pull it. Yeah. It's on rails, it's beautiful. Is that, is that they different than an Eco? Like, it yeah. is because if you don't pull the Eco nib a certain way, you ruin the feed. Mm. You have to hold it from the side. Oh, I've seen you maybe, ruin the video, Brian. You're wrong. I don't oh know. my God. Anyway, it helps you. This is the ultimate beginner pen because the, you know, angled, faceted grip puts you in the perfect hand position to make a fountain pen work. If you're just being gifted a pen, does that tell, does that tell you how to hold the pen? It, it tells you how to in take it apart. And the included instructions. Does it really? Probably. Yeah, or you don't know. Um, this, you don't need instructions, it's right there. You can only put your fingers in one place. Giving this to somebody, they're already gonna write with it. I've given many fountain pens to many people and they just go upside down for the first time. You can't do that here. It tells you, it guides you, it holds your hand mm. through the learning process. And it does not confuse you with superfluous parts and wrenches and greases and all of this other tomfoolery, malarkey and horseplay. It's simple, it's effective, it's clean and it's super durable more durable than that for sure mm. and the feed is much more durable as well this feed is not breakable yes you do have to insert it a certain way but you're mm. not going to accidentally ruin it by mm. positioning your fingers ever so slightly improperly the cartridges are also quite resilient easily refillable if you wanted to go that route as well mm -hmm. and those proprietary the, cartridges that you can only get from Lamy, right that is correct and yeah. they are a huge range of colors to more from. cartridges than the eco has um <laughs> you got me on that one so and also who needs capacity there are so many different types of inks out there if you are being restricted to bottled ink you have the option of what 800 different inks just from our site alone yeah do you really that need very all that capacity? You're, you're, you're right, that sounds if, so restrictive. If you wanna have fun with a bunch of different inks, you just wanna use a converter. That's all you need. You've got so much ink to explore, you don't need capacity. Just jump around, have fun with the Lamy Safari. Mm. Well, strong argument there, Drew, I guess. Round three? Round three, value. Let's talk about bang for your buck. What do you get for your money? Um, the Eco, the base price is $32.99. Um, and everything's included. They have some special editions that are $49.99, like the one I have here. It's a little fancier version, but uh, that's about it, you know? Got everything included. You don't need to buy extra converters or anything like that to be able to use beyond, you know, a handful of inks. And, uh, you know, you got all the tools to maintain it for your whole lifetime, so I don't know. It seems like pretty good value to me. Not like you can get any other piston pen, you know, maybe a Noodler's, but let's be real. It's a little bit different, not on the same plane. This is the best value piston pen that you're gonna find out there, hands down. You, the, there's a lot more going on for, uh, you know, as far as piston pen goes, that, mm -hmm. is, that is for sure. That's right. But I thought I heard you say 32.99, because this one's less than 30. This one's like 29.60. So mm -hmm. I'm not great at math, but I mm -hmm. do believe this is less. Yeah. So, But if, if you someone... wanna use bottled ink with it, what do you have to do? You have to... Well, you can't, right? Because uh, it doesn't come with anything and it doesn't Well, it doesn't tell you what you well, need to get, does it? No, but that's why the Goulet Pen Company website exists to help you with all of your educational needs. Well, that is true. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. But yes, you do need to buy a converter extra mm -hmm. if you wanted to go that route. But uh -huh. this is this is for establishing your mm -hmm. love for fountain pens. This is we're, we're talking, as far as the mm -hmm. use goes, it's a utilitarian pen, as mm -hmm. a lot of Lamy pens are. Mm -hmm. Heavy on the utility, and the Safari is no exception. Heavy on the utility. If you do want to take this next step, you choose. You're not forced to take the next step. You're not forced into intermediate level and potentially being scared off, run out of the countryside by a, just an infinite number of ink choices. You're gonna start off easy with the Lamy Blue cartridge. Nothing wrong with that. It's fine. It'll take care of you. And at $16 a piece, buying a spare nib for this is definitely less than buying a completely different eco in order to switch the nib, which is about twice that. Yeah, so then you get a backup pen to go with it. So, I mean, more value. More, <laughs> okay. more value for you. Anyway, 
Can't that's, write with two nibs at the same time, that's for sure. <laughs> you can definitely write with two pens. That's true. <laughs> All right. I guess you could just buy two safaris and then swap those nibs. You I'm could. Ar I'm arguing against myself. I shouldn't do that. <laughs> But okay, fair well, now's points. Now's the time. Now's the time. Fair points. Okay, so to be fair, we were like, okay, let's let's put each other like put ourselves in each other's shoes, right? Um, so let's talk about some pros and cons for the other person's pen. So uh, I'm gonna talk about the Safari a little bit. Um, pros: uh, it's a long-established brand and model. I'll give it that. Eco has been around for almost a decade, but the Safari has been around for how long is it? Forty years. 300. It's, it's been a while. So I got to give them props for that. To stick around that long and still have a good reputation, got to give credit Un where credit is Unchanged. Due. That's right. It's highly respected in the pen community too. Um, collectible versions can make you go down a deep rabbit hole. I mean, if you like all the special editions and stuff like that, you know, they've done them with regularity. It makes it kind of an exciting collectible. You know, there's a lot of ecos out there too that you can collect, but it's not always clear when they were released and stuff like that is definitely a little more cohesive um, of a collection that you can get with some of the Lamy's. So I'll give you that. Uh, it's a workhorse pen. It is very reliable. It's definitely known for that. Um, the swappable nibs is cool. They both have it sort of, but I would say the, the Lamy, you know, could arguably be made that they both do not that have it. You cannot swappable. buy replacement nibs for the Eco. <laughs> you can, you just have to buy it on a pen. Um, <laughs> and then uh, it does have the spare nibs available. And you know, if you really want to, you could buy a spare gold nib and you could swap that onto a Lamy. That you can't do with a Twisby. So, you know, if you want to, what, quick, 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 wait, wait, quintuple, there we go. I was like, quick tuple? That's not a word. If you want to quintuple the value of the pen, you can throw a gold nib on there. Um, it's easy to clean with a bulb syringe. Granted, you can do that with an Eco, but you got to kind of take the pen apart. It's a little easier to do with the, with the, the, the Lamy. Um, and the clip, although it is not to all people known as one of the most attractive ones out there, it is pretty darn functional. It's definitely that bend in it at the end makes it really easy to slip onto your jeans or your you know, BDUs or whatever the heck you put it in. It's, it's pretty dang practical and it's not going anywhere. So, um, you know, the, the cartridge converter thing is versatile, I'll give you that. Um, and overall, it's just a pretty easy pen to use. So those are my pros for the Safari, giving credit where it's due. Um, some cons that I have not already made abundantly clear through my counterpoints with Drew. Um, converter's not included, which is unfortunate. Um, and it's gonna be slightly more expensive than the Eco when you do include that converter, which everyone wants to do because we have the sales records to prove that about 95% of people are buying <laughs> the converter to go with their Safari. So uh, this should just be included in my opinion. But what are you gonna do? Um, then it would be more expensive. Uh, the cartridges are proprietary. I already pointed that out. Um, there's no instructions. Not as giftable in my opinion, though sure you can give whatever you want. And the ink capacity pales in comparison, which, you know, my argument about, you know, uh, to counterpoint what you said about just only need a converter's worth. Well, you don't have to fill the Eco. You can put one converter's worth into it. That's true. And then you can, you know, go on about your day. That's so. true. And another thing that I will give the Eco. Yeah, give it some love. I do, you know, yeah. I will say, while you you were fair about the Lamy's special edition colors, mm -hmm. I would say that the special edition colors on the Eco are cooler. I think that the color combinations, and that's mm. what I mean, combinations. That's mm. something you really don't see with the Safari. Actually, this year you finally did with the special editions for 2024. Mm -hmm. But prior to this year, you only had one solid color. The Eco has a long history of transparency, opacity, glow in the dark, different color metal trim, rose gold, silver, gold. Like they do do it all. They and it up a bit, yeah. there is quite a lot of variety. Mm -hmm. And I would say that, you know, they deserve you know, a nice salute there. Mm. And the ink capacity, if you like that, there's no doubt that that is the pen that you should go for if you're gonna be writing for long periods. And if you do, like Brian mentioned, love that sloshitude, that is that is where you need to go. I mean, Even more so who than doesn't? the 580 or anything else, like because it is just a- It's just an unobstructed view. Unobstructed. It's just a beautiful clear tube of, you know, inky visibility. What could you not like about yeah. it? Um, and then finally, I would say that for the money, you know, hovering right around that $30 mark, um, you do get a lot of bang for your buck in terms of actual build. The engineering that's in involved mm -hmm. to create that, you are getting, in terms of complexity and engineering, 
a lot of bang for your buck, more so than the Safari even, because this is a simpler pen, and you could look at that and just look at all the parts that are needed to manufacture that. Mm -hmm. It is an incredibly impressive price point for what you're getting and what that includes. However, and I think we're good. So thank you, Drew, for agreeing with me on how great the ego is. I think we can end it right here. I think you've, I think you've convinced everybody. I don't know if you recall, best. but I spent a lot of years in the customer care department here at the Goulet Pen Company, Brian. Oh, did you now? I spoke to a lot of customers who became quite confused about that wrench, about that grease, about the disassembly in general, so mm. much so that they got mm. it taken apart and it became rendered useless because they just could not put it back together. And that makes me sad when that happens. And to me, the point of an entry-level fountain pen is a welcome banner, a rolling out of the red carpet to say, welcome to this hobby. We're gonna take care of you. This is a happy place, a safe place, not a place where you need to worry about not being able to put something back together if you take it apart using the included wrench. Um, it's like a quest, it's like a challenge. For some people, yes. To earn your for right some people, to use it's such just an awesome pen. Yeah. <clears throat> You're a tinkerer, so I know that you appreciate that. But from you know a customer care perspective, it can be complicated, and it can certainly complicate things. The it's nib, fair. the nib swappability is weird. Uh, we used to think you could buy a um, uh, Twisby Mini uh, replaceable nib unit, but those yeah. no longer can come out. So they, the swappability there is no longer there. The feed can be fragile if you grab it right at the fins, those can just domino-like collapse on they you. Can. Can. Um, it'll still work, but it's not what you want. You have to grab it from the side. So nib swappability is a little bit of an issue, mm. um, more so than the Lamy. You know, Lamy definitely makes it easier. And uh, you are limited to bottled ink, which a lot of people would say that's a good thing. Starting off, I can see it being either or. You are You don't have the option. With the Safari, you do have the option to upgrade to a bottled ink scenario. With the Eco, you have to use bottled ink. You know, you can't, you know, go back. You know, you start at step two rather than working your way up. And um, th that's it. It's a fantastic pen. Both of them are fantastic pens. And honestly, I don't know which one uh, is superior. <laughs> we I, I talked about getting to the end of this video and kind of agreeing on which one should win. Yeah, it really, I think it just... I don't know if I could pick a winner. It, it, I think it depends on who you are and who you're buying it for. If you're buying it for someone who might be a little apprehensive about the fountain pen world, I think this is a safer bet. It's a simpler pen. If you are a hobbyist and you are excited about the hobby and mm. you look at the inks and get jazzed up about mm. you know playing and having fun, the Eco is probably going to provide you with more yeah. fun um, than a Lamy. Although yeah. the Lamy does provide you with a lot of fun with those different nib sizes. I don't know, what do you think? It's true, I could I could honestly argue either way. Drew and I, we kind of flipped a coin on this one, honestly. Yeah, we were like, we which really one are you gonna talk both? about? Like, I like them um, both. I agree, I think, I think it's kind of different for different folks. I would say the more foolproof starter pen is the Safari, and that's kind of what it's known for. Um, but for anybody that I come across that has sort of that like, tinkerer has been to them. They already have some sort of obsessive hobby where they know they're gonna go deeper on it. That's where I'll recommend the ego. So really it's hard to go wrong either way. I'll tell you what we should do. Mm. We should ask them. Oh. Let's put a poll mm. up on our YouTube community page okay. the day this video goes live. Okay. And even when this video is old, the community post will still be there. It'll still be there. You can still vote So on I'm gonna put a poll up and you're gonna let us know what you think, and then we'll see who truly wins. And it definitely shouldn't be based on who is more handsome and intelligent and convincing in this uh, particular video. You know, look at the points that we made and see what you agree with. <laughs> thank you uh, so much. Thank you, yeah. And uh, yeah, appreciate that. Love to hear what y'all think. Thank you so much for watching, and right on.